I was involved in fraud for a period of around about five years. I must have made thousands of transactions over the time I was doing this. The things that enabled me to do what I did at such a young age were not giving a fuck. I guess like most teenagers, I thought I knew everything. Did some pretty shitty things, you know. I'm Elliot Castro, I'm 36 years old. I'm from Glasgow and when I was a teenager, I spent around about two and a half million pounds of other people's money. So the first time that I was involved in anything like that was by accident. I found a, a credit card on a train and I thought, oh, I wonder if I can maybe do something with this. So I used it to pay for my train ticket to school to just keep the money and buy sweets. But the police came on the train and I'd got caught. So when I left school, when I was 16, I made an application to a mobile company and told them that I was 18, got the job. People were calling in and buying things on their credit cards. I thought that there must be some way of maybe being able to use that information. I would call the bank, pretend to be them, have a new card shipped out to an address, and they would send a card out and a pin number as well. I was a teenager, buying CDs, haircuts, maybe a t-shirt. Once I realised the potential of what was happening, that was when it became a lot clearer to me that the sky was a limit. I mean, I was literally going mental. I was like rinsing this card, going traveling all over the place. Been to pretty much every country in Europe at one point. Been to the Far East, been to America, been to South America. Top hotels, first class flights, nights out, champagne. When I arrived at a certain airport, I'd make sure that there was a, a nice car to pick me up. When I went out for meals, I would go to the best restaurants. When you're that age and you don't have many friends and you just want people to like you, that's when you just think, well, if money talks and I know that it gets attention, then that's what I'm going to do. The most I spent in one night at a nightclub was probably about 15 grand. Uh, it was just like bottles of champagne and 1,500 quid a time paying for everyone's drink. Basically, pretty much everything that I bought was the best in its class. That was when things really began to escalate. Standard class train fares became first class train fares and um, haircuts in Tony and Guy or somewhere like that. In Edinburgh, I went into a jeweler's. It was a Rolex watch that I wanted. I went in and I told the attendant a golden handshake gift for one of the directors of our company who was leaving. Paid, it was done in about three minutes. Walked out the shop and I literally could have skipped up the street. I just couldn't wait. You just got a 12 and a half grand watch. That's probably the biggest buzz I ever, ever had. I never thought I'd be caught. Literally never thought I would, that it would come to an end. It all went wrong when I got greedy and careless, as these stories so often end in this fashion, you know? I bought a BMW 7 Series. It was about 50 grand, I think, 45, 50 grand, something like that. I didn't have a driving license, I couldn't drive, um, but just to show off to people that I knew, I went to the BMW garage and placed an order for a car straight away. I went to the loo, and when I opened the cubicle door to come out, there was a guy standing right in front of me. He grabbed my arm, he said, we need to have a word with you. I had a, a wallet full of credit cards in different names. There was absolutely no way I was talking myself out of this one. Yeah, that was it. That was the end. One of the worst experiences that I had uh, was when I was in Canada. I ended up uh, going to prison there for a while. Uh, it was the worst place I've ever been in my life. I spent the first week there crying, man. It was fucking horrible. Like, it was really, really bad. Uh, people being stabbed regularly, everything just crazy. Uh, I rang the immigration department in Canada and pretended to be from the British Embassy and the guy at the immigration department uh, said, oh yeah, Mr. Castro, he's, uh, he's being deported on Monday and uh, we've been asked to inform Detective Eastgate at Scotland Yard when he's leaving. Uh, and I just said, well, that's okay, the embassy will take care of that for you. And I said, oh, that's great, thank you so much, that'll save me some work. Um, so when I got back, uh, interestingly, uh, there was no one waiting for me. But when I arrived back, I had, I had no money, I had nothing. Uh, they confiscated all my money that I had with me. So I found the airline ticket that they'd booked for me back, um, complete with all the credit card details that they'd used. So I booked my own ticket on Canadian Immigration's uh, card back to Glasgow. They'd been chasing me all around the world, actually. Thought that was it. I thought, I can't believe it. I've managed to, I've managed to escape again. I went to court in Manchester talked myself out of a sentence there, uh, went downstairs to get my belongings and there was another two cops there waiting to take me to London this time. And then when I got to London, this was the detective from Scotland Yard who'd been after me for like three years or something like that, who had managed to evade capture from. When he met me, he was actually delighted to meet me. It was the strangest experience I've had in my life. In the end, I got a two year sentence, which considering what I did was an absolute result. You know, you hear people saying all the time that 
you know, well, you did when you were in prison, you'd hear people saying, yeah, prison's a piece of piss, you know, it's not, it's horrible. When I came out, I'm, I made a decision that, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't going to do that anymore, and that was it. I know that I never meant to hurt anyone. Even if that's what happened, I didn't mean it, you know? So, just got to deal with it now and crack on. I've got a lot to be grateful for. You know, I fucked up and I'm glad I did it early in my life because I can now get on with the rest of my life. And it's, I had, I had my own journey to go on and it was, it was, it was different. It was amazing at times, but you know, there were some pretty dark times too.